And we're back now with Chief Deputy Gary Brannon, Judge John Tyson, and Paige Ruiz. Paige was the only eyewitness to the murders of her own grandmother and aunt years ago. The case had gone cold until a knife was discovered at another murder scene in Wisconsin. So, John, you're prosecuting that case against Bill Markwart. He, you have the knife. It's got the DNA of his mom on it. You think you've got him for that murder, but there's this mystery DNA of two other women. You wind up losing the case. I do. Losing the case, in, in part because of that third search warrant. And is it true that you walked around feeling guilty? Well, first of all, I, I'm going to take full responsibility for losing the case. The search warrant, there were issues, but it was my fault, okay? So, yeah, I feel guilty. I feel terrible. I let my community down. Um, I feel for, for the people who had elected me, my family. I also was probably a little bit concerned that my job was in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of a lot of prosecutors have had that kind of disappointment and then moved on with their lives. You stayed on it. You searched databases. You used Google. You used every research tool you could think of to search for what? What were you looking for? Well, I knew I had unidentified DNA on a knife. It belonged to two women who were related to one another. And I just, I guess the assumption was that it had to be related to a violent crime and probably a homicide. And so I, I, I tried to go above and beyond where good law enforcement had probably already looked. And, and I went to, to things that probably maybe where the posting might have had an error in it, went, went beyond the normal uh, search and, and uh, started to find some hits. And... I remember printing out a small pile of, of uh, papers that would be, you know, it might be, you know, we're missing this person, or it, it might be unsolved homicide in the state. And then there was a moment where you found a, a flyer, a, a, a page that had your grandmother and your aunt on them, two familial, familially related women who had been murdered the same month as as your victim had in March of 2000. And a fateful phone call was placed by John to Gary, who had been dealing with this cold case now for so long. And what did you feel, Gary, when John called you up and asked you about this case? Honestly, I thought somebody was playing a joke on me. And it made me mad. And, uh, but the more I talked to John, and he finally convinced me that he was a real prosecutor and a real person, <laughs> and that this wasn't a joke, because we were so been so anxious with this, so hopeful so many times before, and it never worked out. But he knew things he couldn't possibly he, he, know. He, the more he told me about it, there were other detectives in the room listening, and the consensus was, if this isn't it, it's never going to be it. And, and within 24 hours of us getting the Wisconsin lab and the Florida lab talking to each other, we knew we had a positive match off the DNA off the knife. And, and it was uh, like you'd taken a ton of bricks off of me. I just, mm -hmm. that just gave me the chills. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the shoe leather detective and investigative work that it took, the cross jurisdictions, you with your, you know, therapy, your hypnosis, actually correcting the record. Yeah. Uh, and helping set them down the, wrong, the right path. I want to I, I want to bring in Anna Sigan Nicolazzi, who's the host of this show. She's a former prosecutor, never lost a case, by the way, headed up the homicide unit. She's the host of True Conviction. She's with us now, Anna Sega. The he's a hero. I mean, these two guys, John's unwillingness to let go, and Gary's shoe leather it, it, commitment to the case. Talk about that. It's everything that I want to highlight in this show. You have the obvious keeping the memories alive of the victims here by sharing their stories. And for me, it is showing all the tireless hard work of men and women of law enforcement, like Gary Brannon, prosecutors like John Tyson. This story spoke to me. We're doing them from the prosecutor's lens that we want to show it all, including the bumps. You know, here in a moment, a real low, he didn't just push it off his desk and right. say, let's go to the next thing. He said, I am going to work for justice. And in such a, a way that we would never imagine, he got on that internet and across the country, he gave some closure and to justice, this other family. And justice was brought. Mm -hmm. he, the, the defendant represented himself at trial, and that wound up just as you might expect. He was convicted, mm -hmm. and he has been sentenced to die uh, as a result of his crimes. Um, any motive ever uncovered? 
The only thing I could think of was he was trying to establish an alibi for what he had done in Wisconsin. Uh, did he? So perhaps the murder him, of his mother was a crime of. I don't know. It, with him, it, not it's the right no word. way of knowing. Uh, but he did the one in uh, Florida, I believe, to help convince the authorities in Wisconsin that it was this drug dealing gang that was trying to uh, frame him for these murders. Mm -hmm. Uh, in his twisted mind. Yeah. That was his defense. He was acquitted of his mother's murder, just for the record. That case has not been proven against him officially, but um, the audience can draw out their own conclusions on what they believe. Mm -hmm. You doing okay? Yes. Good for you. Good for you all. Thank you so much for being here. Well, you can catch new episodes of True Conviction on Tuesdays on Investigation Discovery. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.